so many years now behind me. These old stories. Legends. Maybe they were decades ago. Maybe it was yesterday. And here I find myself again, as if I were standing at the beginning of a new path I did not know. Yet I have walked 1,000 times before. It has returned this familiar feeling. May I have the power for this journey. May those who walk this path with me, and those who will follow my path, untold generations from now, all have the power. May we all have courage. Let our missions have meaning. Let us know what it means to fight. Let us rejoice in our golden moments. Let us understand what honor is. And so my prayer is for a world that knows no boundary or limit to what we may achieve. May every man see the sky and want nothing lower. Luck may she never leave us. History will be written in the coming days. When the ink has dried, let us look back on these pages with pride. Let those who were brave enough to walk this path be enshrined for eternity. Determination and brotherhood carry us through every burden and strife. Give us this, this game of lacrosse, where we may prove our worth. Dámy a pánové, vítejte v Radotíně. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Radotín. Pane Líbe, dámy a herren, herzlich willkommen in Radotín. Po včerejších semifinálových bojích je dnešní menu jasné. Za několik málo okamžiků nás čeká bitva o třetí místo a večer od 19.30 v zápase největším ožije o dvěká rivalita. To ale nepředbíhejme. Teď je na programu zápas, kterému se často přezdívá Battle of Broken, zápas útěchy. To ale dnes neplatí. Před branou borců stojí hráči týmu Lakros z Braslav až Prevel v Berlín. Oba dva tyto týmy se probojovaly mezi elitu NBLL hned při své druhé účasti v soutěži. Je tedy jasné, že ani jeden z nich nebude chtít tuto sezónu opustit bez medaile. Dámy a pánové, už jen vteřiny nás dělí od zápasu o třetí místo. Včerejší neúspěchy z Braslavy proti Jižnímu městu a Berlína proti Kustodes jsou zapomenuty. Ještě než začneme, rád bych poděkoval těm, díky kterým můžeme sdílet ty jedinečné emoce, které Box Lacros přináší. Dámy a pánové, partnery NBLL jsou Selzing Plus, doplněk stravy, PVZP Zdravotní pojišťovna, Agentom Alpha Full Service Agency, The Good Stick Company, Forva Production, Fox Lacrosse Shop, Fortuna a její projekt Hrajme zodpovědně, Pivovar Horimír, Svět IT, Kapaček Republic a samozřejmě nadační fond Pink Bubble. Toliko milé povinnosti. Děkujeme za partnerství a spolupráci a nyní již, dámy a pánové, přivítejme aktéry dnešního klání o třetí místo. Jako první vlci z německé metropole, tým pana trenéra Adama Maršla, dámy a pánové, Šprévelfe Berlín. S číslem 18, Julian Laux. S číslem dvě, Paul Weber s číslem čtyři Matias Lena s číslem pět Anton Grucman s číslem jedenáct Jonas Schmidt s číslem třináct Patrick McKay Číslem 16. 
Michael Geiger. Číslem 21. Luis Tecka. Číslem 22. Dominik Nič. Číslem 23. Markus Steinbach Reinhardt. Číslem 27. Jean Christian Anderson. Číslem 33. Björn Wolfmeier. Číslem 53. Lars Werner. Číslem 54. Justin Wiesmer. Číslem 63. Jonas Schmidt. Číslem 68. Max Becker. Číslem 75. Sedmdesát sedm. Stejn, tajné. A nyní, dámy a pánové, prosím, přivítejte tým z Braslav. Začínáme od brankářů. Číslem 37, Filip Hladký. Číslem 91, Viktor Láha. Číslem dvě, Vojtěch Vajs. Číslem šest, František Klíma. Číslem sedm, Jakub Kovraz. Číslem osm, Marek Šafanda. Číslem jedenáct, Jaroslav Horn. S číslem 12. Adam Vejvoda. S číslem 13. Lukáš Cikhard. S číslem 14. Brian Wittmer. S číslem 29. Rollins Heath. Číslem 33, Miroslav Rajčan. Číslem 34, Carson Kolučí. Číslem 49, Pedro Condon. Číslem 53, David Rottenborn. Číslo 54, Adam Cecha. Číslem 71. 
Lasse Folkvarsen. Jsem 74. Jake Reis. Jsem 82. Tomáš Žipaj. A s číslem 96. Daniel Hájek. Rozočími dnešního utkání jsou pánové Martin Bartuška, Daniel Hagan a Tomáš Rod. Dámy a pánové, na počest týmů, které se probojovaly až sem, prosím, povstaňte a vyslechněte státní hymny Německa a České republiky. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the bronze medal game of the NBL 2023 Final Four featuring the LC's Braslav against the Berlin Spare Wolf. And my name is Dominic Peshek and I'm here with Ryan Dukas. Welcome and let's enjoy the game. So I talked to the teams before the game during the warm-ups. Uh, Braslav's game plan is uh, stick to the game plan from last night but do it better. That's mm. what their coach said. Mm -hmm. So uh, they're pretty confident that they, they can play better game and uh, come up with victory today. As far for Berlin, they want to stay organized. They know they made some mistakes that cost them the game. They want to start better than last night when uh, they dropped 8-1 the first quarter against Hustoris. And they're ready for a physical game. They expect the physical game from Zbraslav and they're ready for it. So first possession for Zbraslav. The two newcomers to the final four, Zbraslav. Oh, nice shot, nice feed. 
first save for Berlin goalie. And it's it's little saves like that that help build the confidence after uh, you know last night's game. It's a uh, it just seemed like a bit of defeat from the Berlin team of oh no they put another ball into the net and so it's uh, it's tough to to get back and yeah we were talking yesterday with Bobsy who was here with me uh, you don't want to let Custodes to run away at the start because they get too confident and it's hard to come back even if you play good lacrosse. When you're down seven, eight goals in the start, it's uh, it's almost impossible to bring it back. And as you said, it's always good for a goalie to make a first save and not to get scored on on the first shot. For sure. <clears throat> good pickup from Zbraslav and uh, they already have two shots. And we have a first penalty. Mm. Too many men for Zbraslav. Little miscommunication there on the bench. So these are the mistakes that they wanted to clean up on both sides. Uh, uh, connect on the simple passes. Don't get too many man penalties. Don't rush on face off before the whistle. Like <laughs> both teams did that last night. So that's a that's a thing to improve for both sides. Good save from Blaha. Lana with the loose ball, and Berlin will get another chance at the power play. <clears throat> Considering the uh, the amount of rain that we kind of had just uh, prior to the game and around midday, the, the floor is looking pretty good out here right now. I mean, I guess we'll have to wait and see how many players <laughs> take, take a bit of a slip, but... Yeah, maybe some of the players already have the proper shoes for the uh, for the floor. Yep. It's not their first time here at the arena. Most of them played at the Frank Menschner Cup mm -hmm. or Alex Rebeski Memorial and some league games also. So uh, this is not the place and time to not be ready. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you work all season and then you, you have an equipment mishap. Not great. Let's say from Baja again. It's very quick with the ball pickup. Fancy clear. <clears throat> Berlin pressuring. They're still on the power play. Oh, uh -oh. nice swim move. Lost it at the last second, but that was nice. Raslov with the ball, 13 seconds left at the penalty. They should uh, just run the clock and wait for the five guys. Brian Whitmer with the ball. He's the huge reason, probably the biggest reason behind Braslav being in the final four. He runs the practices for all age categories, I think. And he's just doing- Eats, sleeps, and breathes. Yeah. Just Showers. Tremendous job for Czech lacrosse. Nice kick save. Well, uh, Berlin goalie looking sharp so far. It's the fourth or fifth save so far. We are yet to have a first goal scored here in this game, four minutes in. But uh, I think that's kind of what we expect. Yeah, first slip here. Yep, there you go. We expected this to be a closer game than both of the games last night. Adam Vevoda, the big talent from Spraslav program. Young kid, bright future. Let's see if he can score more goals than last night. Quick Please. shot. I mean, if I'm Berlin right now, I'm very happy uh, with, with with how we we be how we're playing, as opposed to how we started last night. We're on a very different uh, trajectory. It was like 4-0 at this time last night. Yep. Five minutes in, so. 
They caught the start this, this time, which always helps when you're not down by three or four goals. Another penalty. Yeah, I mean, that's a little bit of a silly one to take, you know. Uh, the push was, was, was called, and even if you disagree, uh, you got to leave the ball alone. You definitely can't throw it to the corner. So the score is still 0-0, but we have it 1-1 on the silly penalties. Too many men <laughs> and uh, unsportsmanlike conduct. The other score that the coaches keep track of. <laughs> oh, there was room to, sh to shoot. Here he goes. Blocked. No reset here. 10 seconds left on the shot clock. Nice rip from Brian Whitman. I've watched a few streams at home uh, when uh, Bratislav has been playing and uh, I've actually been able to witness some uh, Whitmer goals and uh, that seems to be his sweet spot right <laughs> up top there. It's pretty good for an old guy. He had, he had time in the room and he just let it rip. Good placement. It's Bratislav up 1-0. Face of one for Bratislav. Not a great pass there, but Yo, Matthias Lena on the clear, the German <coughs> national member. Wide open on the crease, but they didn't get the pass. It seems like the Berlin Watch the tape from last night. They played very little two-man game. And uh, right here, we had a two-man game off ball. He was wide open on the crease, just couldn't get the ball on time. Do you agree? You, you nod your head. As, as a ref, you agree, illegal pick? I wouldn't call it. You know, uh, nice oh. pick up from Wittmer. Is he going for his second one? between three players, still has the ball. Oh my God, almost hit the top spot with the behind the back. What an effort from Brian Whitmer. Uh, you know, uh, back to your previous question, Dom. Uh, you know, we, we, we have different angles out there, right? And uh, sometimes there is such a thing as, as being too close to the play, even though, you know, optics wise, the, the play is right in front of you as an official. Sometimes you are a tad too close, and uh, the further away you are, you can see the path of the player. Um, so that that sometimes is. Uh, so would you a, would you say it was just a hard cross check or hard pick or what, what was the issue? I, I I think it was the 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 amount of force delivered. Okay. Uh, and the advantage gained, therefore the advantage gained. Just wide of the net, but the two good two-man game. Yep, we got to push this here. Berlin opted to slow it down a bit, but got to recognize that three-on-two in transition. And yes, numbers is uh, that's the easiest goals you can get when you have numbers and you, you go for it. Yep, it's always easier to score two-on-one <coughs> or three-on-two uh, than five-on-five five for sure. Yep, so numbers, yep. four on three. Wow. Night, was it a post type? Maybe. Yeah. Or another save for Berlin goalie? He's been on fire so far. Mm -hmm. Except the Brian Wittmer shot, which was just time and room, so it's hard to pick up the ball when uh, you're facing the guy who has time, room, and just can pick the corner. Another save. The game's pretty up and down so far. Oh, oh that was a good stick. Good opportunity, but great stick. Adam Strecha, one on one with goalie. Tried to go for a dip and dunk. It was almost over and back to the crease. <coughs> So you can see all the Berlin players playing just one-on-one -on -one with their Nice D. pick and roll. Finally. Wow. 
Nice and it play. Works. And it that works. That was great. It looked like they're just going to stand around with their D guys, and it just takes a good two-man game, and you get wide open. Good finish on the crease, though. Brian, uh, Victor Blah is a really good goalie. It's always hard to score on him, and uh, this was good. Braslav team complaining. I didn't see the replay. Maybe it was crease. By counts, so... 1-1 one, one the score. Sprastlov with the face of one. Lena with another ground ball. It's a ground ball machine. <coughs> See him. Not a good pass, but he caught it. Hit the top corner and Berlin's up 2-1. Good start for Berlin. Goalies uh, keeping the score to one for Zbraslav. Many saves. Victor Blah didn't see many shots, and he got two goals scored on. Not his mistake. Both were one-on-one -on -one with the guy from the crease, but Zbraslav D needs to pick it up. Brian Wittmer all over the floor on the defense, bringing the ball up, staying on offense. Wants to pass the ball. Let's see what Zbraslav does, if they can even the game. Uh. It's a lucky bounce for Zbraslav. They're almost... Uh, shot clock violation, but the uh, Zbraslav player hit the Berlin guy in the head, so shot clock reset for Zbraslav, new 30. Strecha wide open in the middle, couldn't just turn around and get an easy shot. Nice. There was not much room uh, in the five hole there, but he just got it through. Good shot. I hope the game goes like this for the rest of the game. Yep, back and forth, back up and, and down. Forth, up and down, even game all the way to the end. So it's exciting for all the players and the fans and everybody watching us. <coughs> Good seal. That was people in front of the shooter. Goalie didn't see much. Nice save, Baja. Clock for uh, Berlin, new 30. They need to settle <coughs> it down, wait for the five guys. Run the middle, do the two man game. There we go. Try it again. If the first one doesn't work, do it again. Good D by number six, Francis Shaklima, mm -hmm. eating the shot. Blaha found his rhythm right now. He <laughs> made some good saves. Good pressure. A block shot. But Braslav doesn't get too many wide looks. Except that for the Wittmer bomb. <laughs> the Berlin D is doing a great job staying in front of the shooter and blocking the shots. That was a good play. Pass didn't connect. I wait maybe to lose ball. Guys everywhere. Mm -hmm. 
Seven seconds. We'll go there. Good bouncer. Yep. Cut a piece of the shoulder. Here we go. We're approaching the last two minutes of the period. Score is 2 2. Good defense. There was a lot of room for one on one. Didn't give him space. Wide shot. <coughs> Rostov bringing the ball up the floor. It's not much two man game or uh, cooperation with the offensive guys. Everybody just kind of. You're getting hit, but you're doing nothing for each other. Good pick up by Vickman. He needs some help. Arno gets open guy to outlet it too. Hard shot, but just wide. Device. I don't think Voda with the ball now. Playing two man game with Dittmer. Don't run away from him. Shot wide. Dittmer. Probably like fifth loose ball of the first period. Another block shot from Berlin B. They're doing a very good job with the shot blocking. So the game time's almost died with the shot clock, so uh, I would think Berlin will wait for the last Hold couple the last seconds. Shot. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Baja will try a shot. That's it for the first quarter. Well, what do you think? What did you see? Uh, you know what? Uh, I, I'm really impressed by, by what Berlin's managed to do in this uh, first quarter as opposed to last night. You know, you, you always talk about when you have to travel on game day, you talk about bus legs, you talk about things like that, and maybe all they needed was a nice night in the hotel, relax, have right. a little shoot around in the morning and, and refocus, and, and here we are. So exciting game so far, some shots, two goals on each side. We'll be right back in a couple minutes for the second period. Welcome back for the second period of this exciting game. The tight game between Berlin and Wroclaw for the third place in the NBL 2023 season. How many games uh, do these teams play in a, in, a, in a full season? Good question. I think probably 
around 15 might be somewhere around that number 15 games and if i'm remember correctly there's a spring and a fall season or or statistics matter between the entire year uh statistic matter between the entire year okay and then the top four seeded teams make it to the final four and it's first against fourth and the second against third during the regular season <coughs> But clear by Gothenborn. It's actually a pickup from a Pilsner team, which used to play in the league a couple of years ago, okay. but they uh, they fell asleep on uh, growing the next generation. Mm -hmm. So once uh, the older players stopped playing, they didn't have enough legs to build a team for the league. So. Two guys went to Custodius, actually, who will play in the final game, and uh, a couple of the guys are on uh, Braslav team, which is good. I, I like that they just didn't fall it down. Mm -hmm. They didn't hang them up. They, they still want to play, so that's good. Uh, I was in uh, Bratislava a few weeks ago uh, for some NBLL games, and uh, same sort of thing happened with some of the bat players they uh, they couldn't put a team together but they were able to join uh, some other teams to, to keep playing which was nice to see it's always good when players who can play find a team to play for but oh nice job by Tomaji Pai picking up a rebound from his own shot and putting it in the empty net yeah, the issue here is uh, growing the next generation. There, there are clubs that work on it seriously. The Custodes or LCC in general. Uh, Zbroslav did it the right way. They started from little kids and they just kept growing and kept growing in the numbers until they could put up a team in the senior league. Malosice and Izhniest also have kids, but there are some teams that played in the long they played for a long time in the league, like uh, Pilsen or Pardubice, and uh, they used to have kids in the uh, youth categories, but don't have any more, which is a shame. You never want to see teams folding, especially when they've been in the league for 20, 30 years. Uh, in yesterday, during the, the halftime <coughs> of, the, of the second game, all the all the kids going on the floor, boys and girls with their sticks and playing around. Uh, it was great to see just that next generation that you that you talk about. Yeah, I used to be one of those kids. I actually <laughs> grew up two streets from here. Okay. So uh, this was I was probably here more than I was home when I was little. Russell running away with the game, two goal lead. Quick two goals, minute and 30 seconds in the second period, and uh, two quick goals from Braslav. That was a sneaky, uh, sneaky shot here. It, uh, I don't think he expected him to shoot it. I mean, as a goaltender, you, you always got to be ready. But uh, I think uh, I saw on the Instagram there was a somebody from Bratislav. Uh, he got his first goal uh, a few weeks ago, or maybe a month ago. Uh, and the whole team celebrated, uh, and it was great. Uh, and it came off of a rebound, and the shot came from such an unpredictable angle. <laughs> and uh, I think the goalie was probably the most surprised one on the floor. I feel like it's very common for the first goal to be uh, some unexpected shot or yep. a wild rebound or something. It's never that you go and uh, get a breakaway or a good two-man game and you end up alone on the crease. It's always just a wild shot or something. Good save from Berlin Goalie. Ouch. A good pressure and he made it through three people just whacking him. He had a broken stick on the floor. Let's see if Berlin can pick it up and uh, get the game closer. Good D was open in the middle of the floor. Numbers. Uh, 
Still numbers. Good save. So we explained the rule that happened here. Adam Bebo that couldn't pick up the ball because uh, it would yeah. be a violation. Yeah, so, What's the so, deal so behind it? The, yeah, so through the crease, you can't be the first one to, to touch the ball uh, after you run through the crease. Uh, we'll also see sometimes when uh, uh, when you're off ball uh, in your offensive set and uh, somebody off ball is trying to set a pick or something and they step through the crease, they are ineligible to receive their first pass. Uh, they're ineligible to receive the first pass. Uh, and most commonly, you, you'll see a referee identify the player by pointing to him. Uh, and a, a smart player will hide his stick or somehow tell his teammates that he's ineligible to receive a pass. Um, so that they don't turn the ball over unnecessarily. Uh, kind of just as we saw just right there. So we have over and back on the Berlin team. <coughs> Roslav with another chance to score. We're five minutes into the second period. We have two goals scored for Braslav. Game's getting a little sloppy, I think. We have uh, many missed passes right now. Mm -hmm. We're over and back. Teams should just clean it up, settle down a bit, make the easy passes, make them connect. Nice try for the dive. And you know, sometimes uh, I know we're playing senior lacrosse here. Uh, we're, we're big boys. Uh, sometimes it's, uh, it, it's really nice and beneficial when you have someone you can call a coach on the, on the bench that doesn't have to do double duties, doesn't have to swing a door, doesn't have to run on the floor, somebody that can actually, you know, observe the game and, and talk to you uh, when you come off and, and you know, uh, refocus the team. Yeah, I think that's, uh, that's the next thing that Braslav needs to work on. They have a coach in Brian Whitmer who is of actually, course. at the same time, their best player on the floor. Of course. So he's always on the floor when it's time to settle the team down during the timeouts or periods. He's gassed. He needs to catch his breath. So speaking about coaching, you know, this is a, this is a coaching tactic of... Uh, recognizing the play we we see it a bit in box lacrosse because we we only have one timeout per half but in field lacrosse we see it a little bit more when uh when a guy's getting double teamed something like this triple teamed near the midline and we might have a turnover or in field lacrosse when we're getting pressured near the boundary and we might get pushed out of bounds uh the coach who has a timeout available will call timeout just to reset the play not necessarily that they have a play drawn up they just want to get out of pressure and uh, get that space from the defense and kind of just reset. Even though the shot clock doesn't reset, they just want to reset the, uh, the, the, the spread. Yeah, you start with the ball uh, not under pressure. You can run the play even if it's not drawn up. Mm -hmm. you, you have time to think about it. But at the same time, this was a timeout where if there was a coach for Zbraslav, he could talk to the D, he could cheer them up or tell them to settle down or tell them some game plan. And it's up to one guy. Oh, what a rip. Zbraslav extending the lead to three goals. We have yet to see a Berlin goal in this second period. So looking out of the booth here, we're getting some good rain here, so we might see some more slips during the game. There was just enough room for the ball. Looking at the replay, that was a beautiful place shot. Braslav with another opportunity, and if they score again, the game is starting to get out of reach for Berlin again. They caught the start of the first period, but they kind of slept during the start of the second. One on one for Ray Loda, he's getting that almost a double team. Need to swing the ball more. Smart play, just dumping the ball in the corner. And yeah, you know, throw it, throw it away. You recognize you got a couple seconds left. I'm not going to force a shot, and in the event that it bounces off something, it shouldn't, and it goes down the floor. 
you know, give your give your defense a chance to get out there early, throw to the corner, gain those three seconds, and uh, get into good defensive position. Uh, I think maybe the clock reset, something we see uh, 15 minutes on the clock here. Yeah, we have uh, some issues with the game clock, so. Uh So we have the time at the right position again. 8.50 left in the second quarter. 24 seconds left on the shot clock, according to the refs. Here we go again. Good defense. Oh, there we see <laughs> the slips again. Another slip. It will become more common. Nice save. As the rain is picking up here in Radekin. Good pick up. Nice. <coughs> Battling with some good loose balls now, but couldn't capitalize on the goal. There was an opportunity for breakaway, but pass didn't come. Oh. Hit the pipe. Maji Pai with the ball, bringing it up the floor, staying on offense. He's a tough guy, he can do some big picks. He's not scared of the contact. Berlin bringing the ball up the floor. Sloppy pass yeah. again. The guy wasn't looking. You didn't get under pressure. You could just run the ball over. This is what's killing Berlin right now. Good save from the Berlin goalie. He's actually playing a really good game despite the score being 5 to 2. Yep. He's having some good saves. He's making the saves he's supposed to make. Matthias Lana putting pressure on Adam Vivoda. They really got to come out of this double team with the, with the ball here. And they do. It's always hard to come up from the double team and one of the guys doubling you is uh, Matthias Lana. He's <laughs> he might be the best uh, defensive player in the league. And they need to get a good possession here. And, and they should work for the reset. They really shouldn't work for a goal. I mean, obviously you want the goal, but you got to give your defense a break. You, you, you got to you gotta take a load off the guys in the back. Yeah. Unfortunately, that didn't happen. Uh, unfortunate bounce from the boards that went right to the crease to the goalie. Nice shot. Goalie dropped to his knees a little bit. There was open spot at the top, and Adam Leibora capitalizes on it. 6-2, Braslav, and uh, Berlin needs uh, some some changes, I would say. Maybe a timeout or switch the goalie for a couple minutes, give him a breather, even though it's not his fault, but just make something, do something different. Yeah, yeah, and that's sometimes all you need, right? Uh, goalie just has to refocus, but if he's always on the floor, and as we were saying, if, he's, if you're always playing defense, he's always playing, give him a break, let him catch his breath. And it actually helps the D guys because they see a fresh goalie coming nice from stop. the bench and they, they want to do something extra to not let him down. Mm -hmm. And it just brings the whole team a little up. A little bit of silliness here. <laughs> Gymnastic class going in, going on in the corner. Berlin a little slow to get on the floor with five guys. There is the fifth guy, just 15 seconds left on the shot clock. Good save by Bach. Please the double team. There we go. 
Sloppy pass on the break on the clear. Good body. So this might be the the thing that helps Berlin. They are getting a chance on power play. Number 49 from Braslav. Two minutes for slashing. And uh, Berlin couldn't ask for anything more. You get an opportunity, five on four. If you score, it might bring your momentum up, momentum up a bit or your mood up a bit. You never know, maybe the next two will go in and we have a close game again. Yep. Set play for Berlin. Oh, the air gate. Wild shot from the ankles. All right, chance number two. Good save by Blaha. Not much happening on the power play for the lane. They're just throwing the ball around and then one takes the shot. Still a minute left in the power play, so right. if they pressure the ball, they might get uh, one or maybe even two opportunities again. There's no pressure, there's, there's no sense of urgency for the lane. Yeah, We're just uh, letting Zbraslav hold the ball. As uh, as they settled into offense, Whitmer got the ball over center. Bratislav was was changing, had two players on the floor, Berlin had four, and they are all just sinking back uh, into the hole. No pressure. Yeah, you do that when the game is tied or something. You don't want to make a stupid mistake, but when you're down, there's not much more you can lose. And we have numbers now. Let me see the Safe. slip. Smart play, stopping on the spot, letting the guy slip, around, slip away. And good finish from uh, Vojta Weiss on the crease. Nice feet. Falling down, putting into the far side. Nice sell on the save for the goalie, but just couldn't save it. Yep, as, uh, as the temp's dropping in this uh, rain set on the turf, we are going to see some more people uh, Slipping and sliding over here. Which is unfortunate because uh, the venue here is awesome. You're under the lights, outdoor box arena, you don't see many of them. Nope. You being from Canada, how many do yeah. you have of these? Wow. So I've uh, I've only been on, uh, sorry, I've been on two. Um, and actually, neither of them have been in uh, Ontario. Uh, both of them have been in uh, in the USA on uh, First Nations territory uh, in Onondaga. And uh, the other one was, uh, I can't remember exactly where, but it was just outside Buffalo. Uh, and uh, it's, it's definitely, a, it's a fantastic experience, um, but very uncommon. And actually, uh, I wanted to say this is, this is my first time in Radisson, so uh, I'm, I'm super excited to be here. Um, I'm very glad to be here. Uh, received the, the invite through Adam and uh, Bartushka, and uh, I've been able to get a personal tour to the Good Stick uh, facility. Dungeon. The dungeon, dungeon by Mr. Whitmer. Yeah, that's another great thing that he's doing for the growth of lacrosse. He's uh, he's uh, making sticks and selling them uh, for the starting programs, and the price is what, like quarter the price of another cheapest. Hundred percent. And I, I, I think um, part part of like the the price is something in itself, but it's also the fact that it's made here in the EU. Uh, just because... Wonderful goal from Berlin, wow. dunk from behind. We'll come back to that thought. So Fantastic. finally, at the end of the second quarter, first goal for Berlin, but it was worth the wait, I think. 
and I missed it. The uh, I was obstructed by the by the corner. Um, I just going back to what I was saying about uh, about the good stick. So it isn't just the price; it's about the the availability here. Uh, so I know through COVID. Um, There were some uh, purchasing issues, uh, well, supply supply chain issues worldwide with other things, but uh, the majority of equipment, if not all the equipment, comes from the USA, comes from North America, and uh, you can't always rely on, if you, if you broke your stick, can you really wait three, four weeks for it to come over mail or, or however, but so with having the stick here made in the EU, uh, the shaft produced here, uh, it's a huge step forward to having equipment available um, because really for beginners, in, in, in my opinion, you know, what, what type of helmets are we wearing? We're wearing hockey helmets. Yes, we do have specific lacrosse face masks, but can you wear a hockey helmet and a hockey face mask? 100%. Can you wear hockey shoulder pads? 100%. Hockey gloves for beginners, can you wear them? For sure. So, but the only thing that is absolutely unique to us is the stick. That's right? true, yeah. And the uh, other thing about the good stick stick is uh, that it's actually ready to be used right when you get it because it's strung by the young kids of LCC and Braslav. So he, he pays them some money to string it up. So when you get the stick in your hands for the first time, you just can go straight to practice and practice with it. It's not the... Uh, strung from the machine like the other ones okay where you need to work it out or you need to find somebody to string it for you with the good stick you pick it up and you can just go play ready with to it. go yes which is great i think i i, I didn't know that i i thought uh, whitmer and his partner uh, strung them all himself they do string them but uh i know a couple guys that string for them too as oh, a as a little part-time job for sure so that's that's awesome. And of awesome. course, the experience that those young kids are getting stringing those sticks, and then, you know, uh, you become the guy at the tournament that can fix a, fix a stick. Yeah, um, the local string doctor. <laughs> and that's it for the first half of the game between Braslav and Berlin Strabulfak. Score is seven to three for Braslav. Yeah, Berlin's got to come, come together, find out what they've been doing wrong, which is mainly uh, taking some better opportunities on offense, slowing it down, and not having to sit on defense and sit on defense, sit on defense, because that's when you start to fall asleep and you make silly mistakes. But you got to keep the ball out of. Uh, Bratzwav's uh, stick. We'll see if they make any changes for the third period. We'll be right back with you at the start of the third period in about 14, 15 minutes.
We're back here at the LCC Arena. We're about to start the third quarter of the bronze medal game between Zbraslav and uh, Berlin. Zbraslav up to up 7-3 in the halftime. And really, you got to treat this as 0-0, right? Yeah, we just had 15 minutes uh, break. You can't uh, come into this thinking that you're down four goals. You got to reset. The four goals, nothing in lacrosse. Especially at halftime, it doesn't mean anything. Two quick goals and uh, momentum can swing to Berlin side and uh, it could be all different story at the end of the game. The first shot 15 seconds in from Zbraslav. Shot clock reset, new 30, two-man game. Brian Wittmer fishing for an uh, open guy. Good clear by Berlin. They should settle it down. Get some open look. Either a long distance shot or uh, find someone on the crease. Oh. It could have been a good opportunity if he didn't slip. Yep. And to be honest, what, what, what I, when I said whoop or whatever uh, reaction word I, I just said, I, as uh, watching a lot of sports and being involved in a lot of games, like the worst thing that happens to us are, are injuries, you know, and when, uh, when you can, sometimes, you know, when you can feel your body slipping and you, you try to counteract, that's actually worse than falling down in the first place. And I just, I'm glad that he's okay because it looked like it could have been a bad level knee or ankle or something. Yeah, we're very fortunate to not have any injuries so far in the games. Yesterday, nothing uh, today so far. Everybody is staying healthy. The floor doesn't help, but everybody's uh, doing good so far. Good hard hit there in the corner. You know, as a referee, uh, on, on a play like that, when, uh, when we clearly have the ball loose and both players kind of look at each other and both players prepare for the hit, uh, it, it's, it's, it's really, uh, you know, we, we, want, we still want to keep the physicality of the game. And uh, if both players are aware that the, that the hit's coming, we're going to let the hit go. As long it's as part it's of the game, so uh, you need to be prepared to be hit and to hit someone. And just uh, back to back to talking about injury, and you can help me out with the name. I know you've said it a few times, but uh, uh, the goalie last night in, uh, or sorry, uh, yesterday's game in Bratislav, uh, he took a he took a shot right off the helmet last night. He took one in last quarter right off the helmet. I mean, it's it's part of the job as being the goalie. You don't get to choose where the ball <laughs> goes, but uh, I mean. Any time you have stuff going to the head, like you hope everybody's okay. So I I hope that's the last one and he's not going to get another one. You can see it on the floor uh, if, if it's okay or not. But usually if he's right back in the position, you know he, he ate it and uh, he's all good. Sometimes the goalie just raises his hand, yep. signals to the ref that uh, something's yeah, not still, good. Mm -hmm. Finish. Get loose. <clears throat> you know, on, on a night like this, we got a little bit of rain, we got a little bit of dark. Uh, the pink ball is a real nice touch. You know, it really stands out out there. Yeah, you can see it. Uh, we're pretty far high up above yep. the floor, and we can see the ball clearly, so that's a good thing. The other thing that the ping balls are part of the good cause that the NBL is doing with the Pink Bubble Foundation for the unfortunate kids. Just a uh, cherry on the top of the cake. And they're they're auctioning off jerseys? Yes. Can you there talk a bit about that? Yeah, there was an all-star game uh, a couple months ago 
featuring the best players from uh, the, all the teams of the league. And part of it uh, was we play with the pink balls and uh, all the players' jerseys get auctioned off. And the uh, revenue from that goes to the Pink Bubble Foundation, which we'll probably hear more about from uh, the director of the league, Adam Sherpan, who is behind all of that. But it's just, uh, it's a tremendous, tremendous cause to, to be behind helping uh, kids. I, I don't know the specific details, but I think it's uh, kids that are unfortunate, they, they have cancer, and uh, this foundation helps them to live their life to the fullest, using the money to, to make their days better. A definite worthwhile cause. Good save by Blaha. He's fancy with the stick. Good man, Leivoda playing two men game. Beautiful setup. Nice save from the goalie. But it was a great two man game to get open look. So one difference, uh, uh, one difference we have in Canada, uh, I mean, rules change all the time, but uh, one rule that we've had for the longest time is, uh, is about the crease. Here in international uh, lacrosse, uh, you're allowed to jump. You can still jump in, in Canadian lacrosse, but uh, as soon as your feet break the, the white plane in the, in the air, you're deemed to be into the crease, so we don't get to see these nice close uh, jumping plays as, as we just saw. Um, yeah, that's that's one big difference is that we have a lot more crease action here in international lacrosse. Yeah, you can still score uh, diving goals in uh, Canada. Yes, but it's yep. more of like a jump towards, not up high, which yes, we see exactly. here. Yes. Nice also, stop. Also missing the dotted line here. <laughs> Some rules I actually like better, like uh, when you're down, there's no 30 second shot clock and you can just run the clock for the whole uh, power play or yep. man down. Yeah, so uh, I, I wanted to actually uh, reference that. You know, here's a bit of that momentum. Short-handed goal. Short-handed goal, first goal of the, of the third quarter. Now we're within three. That's and if they, if they win the face-off, they have a power play opportunity. They can score another one, and it, it will be a two-goal game, which is definitely in the reach to, to tie it up. Momentum swing on the side of Berlin, and the uh, game will be more interesting. Yeah, you were talking about the... Yeah, sorry, uh, uh, the, the, the 30, yeah. So I, I wanted to bring up that a little bit earlier. We, in our one of our first uh, man-down situations, uh, I wanted to mention that... Uh, uh, previously, and the, the rule has changed from year to year and, and from level to level. Uh, but uh, yeah, the 30, 30 second shot clock used to not run. And uh, when you were a man down, you could kill your entire penalty. Two minutes. You name it, you normally gave it to a guy with a big deep pocket on his stick. And there are, there are specialists for that. Like, I remember watching senior a lacrosse when uh stefan keo was playing for the six nations and uh, i was just amazed like he would stand in the corner getting whacked by four people and just kept the ball for almost the entire man down situation i nice he was ready for that good pressure by braslav extremely good pressure you know and you got 10 seconds to get over the line the closer you get, the more you panic. Yep. There we go. 
13 seconds left for the power play of Draslav. Uh, Let's see if they go for it or settle for the whole 30 here. Get another block shot from uh, Berlin. They're doing good job with. Oh, we have a simultaneous penalty. Number 54, Adam Strecha for Zbraslav. And number 22, Dominic Nietzsche for Berlin Spravulfe. Roughing. So both guys go off for roughing. If we have a simultaneous penalty, the number of players on the floor doesn't change. Still five on five. Both guys sit until the next dead ball. Is that right? That that's that's correct. Dead ball counts as a goal or timeout, right? It's not out of bounds or uh, over so, and so, back. So the, the the international game uh, is is uh, it, it does talk about that. So it's a. Uh, it would be a, a stoppage after, and it, it, it does look kind of weird that uh, after the penalty time is expire, the ball could hit the mesh, uh, the players are allowed to come back on, and it, it, it does seem kind of strange because it's going to slow the game down because we already have the five players, so they have to leave the floor, and it just, we always want to have quick restarts, right? We, we, we don't want to, we don't want to wait, we want to keep the game moving, uh, and that's just an unfortunate uh, turnover here. Over and back for Berlin. Kamajipai rushing to get the ball in the corner. Berlin bench complaining about too many men on this Braslov squad. Reds didn't pick it up, but it's part of the game. You see some, you miss some. Is that right? You know, it happens uh, It happens to everybody. Yes. <laughs> Good one-handed nice take up. Scoop. Numbers for Braslav. Go all the way to the net. Good kick save by the Berlin goalie. Oh, jeez. Oh, oh, unfortunate. Wide open on the crease. Berlindi forgot about him. Couldn't connect on the pass. <clears throat> this looks like numbers for uh, Berlin. Yeah, Four Berlin's on gotta, one. They got to keep going to the net. Ah. Uh. So they had four guys on the offensive side, didn't go for uh, for the breakaway or for the numbers. And then all of the four guys went to sub and it took 10, 15 seconds out of their shot clock. So, oh, wild shot, <laughs> wild shot. It, you know, so like uh, going back to talking about a coach and having somebody to kind of recognize that and, you know, a little bit better substitution, right? So we just had that situation on offense. And previously, when uh, when the Bratislav player was alone on the crease, we kind of had the opposite situation. They had a bad substitution on the defensive side. Bratislav fans coming and, and alive. I, I, I wanted to say I, the person with the drum must have just gotten here. Uh, it's yes. the first time to, to hear the drum tonight. And the person with the flares must uh, still be on their way. <laughs> yeah, we had flares yesterday. They, they cheered really hard for their team. Yeah, the energy uh, behind each club is, 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 is incredible here. 
game's pretty up and down right now. Not much settled offense. It went by really fast. We have last three minutes of the third quarter. We saw only one goal from Berlin, the shorthanded one. A three-goal game is still within the reach for them. Oh, wonderful play. That's, uh, that's a highlight reel goal there. One-headed grab and a solid finish. So the third period is 1-1 uh, in, in the score. Berlin really needs to pick it up if they want to make something out of this game. can rush it but they need some sense of urgency that uh, if they play the way they keep we're playing the first three quarters will not be enough to come close <clears throat> so that's the rule we were talking about the guy running through the crease and then receiving the pass as the first guy so ball to Zbraslav Another good two-man game for the Braslav team. Was shot went wide. Loose ball battle by the boards. Vojta Weiss coming up, uh, almost coming up with the loose ball. See what Berlin will bring on this offensive shift. Not even a shot, so that's that's a killer. You're down, you get an <laughs> offensive opportunity, and uh, you throw away a pass and don't even put a shot on the net. Good hard pick. Oh, was that right in the stick of the defender? Right into the stick. Well, that's something that Berlin does very well. Blocking the shot, staying in front of the shooter. They just need uh, their offensive guy to put up some uh, put up some goals or help the D. So that's a second offensive shift in a row where the ball didn't hit the goalie. Nice strip. Good pressure by uh, Berlin offense. Three shifts in a row. No shot. No shot. It's hard to score goals when you don't hit the net. Who said that quote? You miss 100% of the shots you don't take. Michael Scott, I think. <laughs> yeah, the more famous of the mics. <laughs> nice shot around the defender. This time, uh, the Berlin defensive guy couldn't block the shot. And the uh, goalie probably didn't see anything. The shot coming around the knees of the defensive guy picking the spot. And just like we've been saying, they've had three offense. Berlin's had three offensive sets, no shots. Bratislav comes down and they bury. Uh, it's it's not tough to see what's missing. <laughs> Good face-off win by Bratislav. Bitmer with the ball. There's numbers for Berlin, but they don't go for the pressure. Oh, wild pass. Eight seconds, do they recognize? <clears throat> this is the end of the third period. Spraslav up nine to four. Berlin has some things to talk about during this intermission. 
in the last, what, four or five minutes, we didn't see a shot on the net from Berlin, even though they were on offense. They had five on five opportunities. They had numbers on the on the clears and just don't hit the net or don't even take the shot. So that's not a way to put this game close. The score seems like it's a one-sided game, but other than the last five minutes of no shot from Berlin, I think it's pretty evenly played. Uh, yeah, they can definitely compete, but it, it's it's the the small little errors, and as you say, like when when you do get the ball and you transition up and you're subbing, and then you finally don't get your fifth player on until 15, 10 seconds left in the shot clock, your your offensive possession or your offensive. Uh, opportunities very limited yeah so who caught your eye during this game i think uh biggest i don't want to say surprise but like uh biggest difference from yesterday i think the berlin goal is playing tremendous 100 percent, 100 percent. if he's not focused as he is now this the score is way way bigger because the the offensive power of berlin we just we just haven't seen it yet yeah that's true goalie keeping them alive Defense, other than the mistakes when they are not picking up the players uh, that are subbing, is playing good. They're blocking shots. The clears are good. They just need to have the sense of urgency on offense when they have numbers go for them and play a little bit more together. They they, they run around. They, they set some picks, but it's it's like a wild offense. It's not settled at all. I don't think they talk on the bench what, what the plan is, mm -hmm. what, what they're going to do on this shift. And it just they just let it play out, and it's it's not been working for them. Is this the same sort of setup with the screen and the lights that happens at AHM? Is is the the same sort of? Uh... Yeah, pretty much the same. But uh, during AHM, it's almost impossible to walk through the stands <laughs> yeah, and yes. through the arena. Definitely, it's, definitely. The place but is crowded, and uh, it makes for a great atmosphere. The lacrosse mecca. It is. We always wait. We have the mayor who has the speech in the beginning of the tournament. Mm -hmm. We're standing, the custodians stand right by the door, by the boards here, and we're always betting, is the Mecca coming this year? Because during the speech, he usually talks about Team being the Mecca of, uh, of European <laughs> lacrosse. So start of the fourth quarter, Braslav with the ball. Good save by the goalie. The defense didn't pick up the guy from the bench. He had a wide open path to the goal. The goalie saved him again. He needs some help from the offense. Not a good save. And we will get a penalty for holding, probably, or trip. Holding. So uh, not what you want for uh, as a Berlin. Instead of having your opportunities to score some goals and bring this game closer, you get to go man down. But actually, the last goal they scored was in man down, so Is maybe it, it might help. <laughs> maybe that's the strategy. Maybe, maybe that's the game plan. We need to take a minor penalty and uh, score on the, the man down. <laughs> Raslav with the opportunity to get the game even more out of the reach for the lane. Brian Whitmer looking to feed someone. Shot wide. Oh, that's unfortunate. That is. What a celebration by Brian Whitmer. I don't know if the goalie didn't see it that well or if it, it surprised him, but he had a clear view of the, sh of the shooter and just snuck in the five hole. So as Braslav capitalizes on the man-up opportunity, we have a score 10-4 for Braslav. 
face-off win for Braslav. I think Berlin didn't even use one of their timeouts. Maybe that's the way to go in the fourth quarter if uh, if they want to change change up something up or disrupt the momentum of Braslav. Use the timeout. Yeah, normally we uh, we only think of a timeout as an offensive thing, but it's also uh, something that the defense can greatly benefit from. You know the. The, the kind of the, the lingo that we use uh, in North America is uh, to stop the bleeding, right? To, when, you, when, when you get like a three, four goal run, quick, 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 bang, 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 bang. You got to treat, uh, treat the problem, call the timeout and catch your breath. Didn't see what happened here. Uh, uh, it looked like unsportsmanlike conduct for uh, number 12, Anamli Voda, from what the referee was signaling. So man up opportunity for uh, Berlin. Six goals, differential, 12 minutes left in the game. There we go. Hey. Good shot. They make it look very easy, right? Like that's easily reproduced. You got five more to go. I was about to say six goals in 12 minutes. That's uh, one goal every every other offensive shift. It's doable. Another five hole goal. Braslav winning the face-offs, that's huge. Berlin scores and they, they can, uh, if they won the face-off, they could have another opportunity and they could, <coughs> they could use the feeling of just scoring a goal and having another chance. They lose the face-off battle. Good pressure. Very good pressure yeah, by that's the... That's great pressure, wow. Oh, what are we doing here? <laughs> seven, seven, seven seconds left on the shot clock. We need to put it up on the net. Nice good reset, shot. but they gotta get the GB. And numbers, there's time and room. Uh, he should have shot that. Good face oh, dodge. Here we go. Oh, oh, another post. So Berlin's getting some good shots, good looks. So you hit two, two pipes, you reset the clock two times, and then you throw away a simple pass. Wild pass to nobody, but Braslav able to pick up the Lucy. And again, offensive player going through the crease and getting the pass. Braslav putting some good pressure on the clears now. There's a chance. Oh, the D guy doesn't see him. <laughs> right on. Member of the Czech national field team. Part of the San Diego squad that went to USA for the World Championships in uh, June and July. Is he on the box uh, national team as well? No, he's not. He is actually from Brno, the okay. second biggest city. He's like two hours away. And uh, he plays because he likes lacrosse, but not on the box national team. I think he's a part of the larger pool of players. Okay. So we'll see. Maybe he will be on the squad for the Utica games. Ah, just, just didn't make the... The previous tournament. Yeah. Uh, breakaway for Zbrasla. One, one yes or no? Goalie. Yes or no? No. no. <laughs> They're both wrong. <laughs> both wrong. <laughs> but that's exactly the goal we were talking about that would not count in uh, Canada. True. Jumping yep. to the crease. Yep. Feet breaking the, the vertical plane. But a nice goal. 
cold-blooded. One-on-one -on -one with the goalie. Good pick up by Braslav. Wonderful goal. Miscommunication on the defensive side of Berlin. Nobody picking up the player with the ball. And he just goes right to the net. Makes no mistake on the crease. Nice goal. Good pick from Madame Beibora. He was on the offside of his offense on the lefty side, but still managed to help with a good pick. Leoing the way for his buddy. And, uh, Braslav is up 12-5. And they're very dominant on the face-offs. <laughs> Braslav doesn't need to rush anything now. They can just play full 30 and yep. uh, works for the reset. Make sure defense is in good position. Doesn't give up a fast break the other way. Yeah, focus on the subbing correctly, picking up guys from the bench. Not like this, there was an open guy, but, <laughs> but definitely don't rush it on the offense. There's a big goal differential, seven goals up. Block shot, didn't hit the net. Who's going to pick up the guy down low? That was lucky. Very Another lucky. broken stick. Hard cross check, but within the rules. Oi. <laughs> oh, Ooh, did that? It didn't go uh, in. But... No, I thought he was a little shaken up with that bouncer. Maybe it got under the arm and stung him somewhere. He just put a little the theatrics on it. <laughs> so halfway through the fourth period. Does it count? It does. Nice effort from uh, Berlin. 12-6 to score. It will probably be hard to score six goals in seven minutes when you scored six goals in three and a half quarters, but true. it is not impossible. You know, here we go. This is, yep, this is a good look. Berlin just needs to go for it right now. There's nothing to wait for. Step in. Ah, good save by Blaha. <laughs> I don't know what advice they were waiting, running the clock. Nope. This could be it for Berlin. Uh, Braslav throwing away passes. They they won the last face-off. They had a good look from the crease. That's the way to play. That's the third pipe in the last couple of minutes. They got to come up with this ball. Is he taking it to the net? No, oh, he wisely pulled up. Braslav not rushing anywhere. Good save. Oh, it went through. Wow. I didn't believe thread it. The noodle. Thread, thread the noodle. Thread the needle. I couldn't believe it either. Uh, 
we got a delay penalty here coming uh, against Berlin. Uh, I think it's going to be a little goaltender interference. Got a little too uh, a little too greedy down there on the crease. <laughs> goaltender has the ball inside the crease. Uh, you're not allowed to make contact with the stick while the while the ball is in the stick. That's the worst. What? So please explain the rules here. Uh, there's a reset on the play. Yeah, so uh, normally when we have, uh, uh, during each offensive set, when the offense brings the ball over the midline, they're not allowed to go back. However, that rule is uh, superseded by a reset, the defense touching the, touching the, the ball and causing it to go over. Uh, so in this play, uh, we kind of had a bit of a wonky one here. We had a delay penalty. We had a reset. Um, and yeah, Rodslav uh, capitalizes on the, on the man up opportunity. So this might be the uh, end of hopes for Perlin. Another goal for Braslav. Legal procedure on, on the faceoff. So Berlin ball. Oh. What's going on down there? You know, it's always, a, as a referee, it's always a bit of a concern, you know, it, when you have a tournament like this, uh, where you have teams coming from far away, and this is our last game, we're not gonna play again until six months from now. So sometimes people wanna get a little silly and have some antics and stop playing lacrosse. Good save by Blaha, easy for him. Streaking Strecker. Oh, that's in. No goal. I want to see the replay on that. I would have swear that uh, when the goalie was falling in the net, he brought the ball in with him. Yeah, so you know, this this one's a real tough one, right? Like we... Uh, you don't see the we, ball in the net? Yeah, the, the rule book says the, the, we got to see the ball crossing the line. And I mean, we can do some inference, some deduction, but uh, we, we, need, we do need to see that ball across. You know, it's inside the equipment or something. The referee's on the backside. It's a, it is a tough one. And I know Bratzwav is, is a little heated because the, in the game yesterday, there was a couple scenarios where the ball may or may not have gone in and the referees may or may not have seen uh, due to their angle. So uh, I'm sure Mr. Whitmer will uh, make a comment about that later. Another sloppy pass from Berlin. Okay, that's over and back in the crease. Pass to the goalie. Another <laughs> an even sloppier pass. Even, even sloppier, right? But we're three minutes uh, left in the fourth quarter. I, oh, nice. Ooh, fancy around the world. I think Braslav is slowly starting to see himself on the in the third place with the bronze medal around their neck celebrating which is this is a big accomplishment for Braslav first time in the final four winning the bronze medal game good for the program for sure huge for the program and the the kids that we talked about before right they see that they're uh the success that their seniors are having that makes them want to play even more and, and be a part of that team a little 
corner stinger there. Well, Berlin had a good quarter here. They, they hit three pipes. They have two goals. They played like this the whole game. It would be definitely more interesting and uh, closer. That was a good rip. Nice placement. But too little too late. Ah, overheard that uh, we just had somebody's first goal uh, th this this last play, and uh, the referee th threw the... Uh... <laughs> So that was actually a nice shot, so. Berlin doesn't pick up the players. Good ball movement by Kraslav. Three on two, on the run, catching the ball with his uh, body turned around. That was a great ball movement and a uh, good finish on the crease. Out by the boards. Big swim. Another two on one. Good save by the goalie. So uh, here's an interesting fact for you to explain to the fans and <laughs> people watching. We have a penalty shot here. So uh, what, yeah. is, what yeah. is the rule here? Sure. So uh, the, the rule states that uh, we'll just talk about a legal substitution. That uh, So in the international game, maybe compared to Canadian lacrosse, uh, we have different rules. If you're on offense, it's a change of possession. If you're on defense, it's a penalty. In the international game, uh, it's always a penalty, whether you're on offense or defense. Nice big stop. Uh, and there's also a rule that talks about if, uh, if there's an illegal substitution under two minutes in the game, if, if the penalty cannot be served in its entirety, it turns into a penalty shot. So the, the referee blew the whistle at 155. You can't fully serve a two-minute penalty, so therefore the penalty shot is awarded. Big stop from Baja on the penalty shot. So what, what are the rules that create the penalty shot here? It's an uh, illegal substitution under two minutes. Uh, it's uh, too many men on the floor in under two minutes. Maybe unsportsmanlike conduct or something? No, uh, it's, a, it's a bench penalty, right? Yeah, there's also about something about... Uh, uh, I, I, ha I'd, I, I would have to brush up on, the, on that particular one. And I, I, I will have to very soon. So I'm sorry. <laughs> I can't fully answer your question. Good pickup by Zbraslav. And I mean, I, I'd be very disappointed here if the Bratislav fans don't bang the drum for the next... Another pipe. 105. Matthias Lana, one on one with the goalie hitting the pipe. That's four pipes in the fourth quarter. Four potential goals. How did he squeak it in? That was a wild goal. Probably even behind the goal line. Yes, he was two steps behind the goal line. But he found a place. The last minute of play here of the bronze medal game. Braslav taking this game. 15 to 7 so far. Good effort by Braslav shaking off the loss from Ijniesta from last night. Nice block, and here we have the last possession of the game. A timeout for Zbraslav. Yeah, I don't think this is going to be a <coughs> dramatic.
drawn up offensive play. I think it's just uh, putting the right people on the floor to kill the clock. Yeah, either yeah. that to put the play, to put the players that can uh, just hold the ball, or maybe uh, it's some kind of Brian Whitmer's thing to put uh, the youngest players to yeah, enjoy it, the yeah, final yeah, moment. Yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent, something like this. I I totally agree. Definitely not an offensive play to to get another goal. And uh, we see just off the off the field there behind the bench. Uh, I think the young gentlemen are getting ready to light the flares. <laughs> that will be a big celebration for his Braslav fans and his Braslav club. Third place finish in the 2023 NBL season. Big success. Huge for the future of the program. First time in the final four. Second year in the league. Yep, speaks to the hard work of... Uh, Everybody in the community. There are the flares. And that's all she wrote. That's it. Braslav taking home the bronze medal. Winning the game 15 to 7. Great effort by, uh, by his Braslav team. And uh, sad faces on the Berlin players. Their goalie kept them in the game. He played. 100%. He played great game. The score could be even higher on this Braslav side. But still, good run from Berlin this season. They, I think it's their second season also in the NBL. So just making it to the final four is huge. And maybe next year they will put up some uh, better fights in the final games. Yeah, you, uh, you, you're, you're told when you grow up um, playing sports, you, you don't always want to win. You want to lose because you want to taste that. Uh, you want to taste the defeat, and you want to. You, you learn. You learn that it sucks, and you don't want to do it again. And you you want to get better. So hopefully uh, Berlin takes this learn the lessons from it and uh, prepare for already thinking about the 2024 season. Let's hope they, are, they get hungry from this, work hard in the off season and come prepare for the next season and uh, play some good games in the Czech National League. Okay, I think this is it for the bronze medal game. Thank yeah. you for being with us. My name yeah. is Dominic Peshek. I was here with Ryan Dukas. We all have a little time here between uh, the bronze medal game and before the final game. It's at 7 or 7.30? I'm not sure. 7 or 7.30. One or the other. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Yeah, thank you so much. Hope you had fun watching, uh, watching the stream. Yeah. Fun guys, I'll I'll talk to you during the final game with Bobsy here, and you can cheer on Ryan here on the floor because he's <laughs> one of the reps for the final game. Thank you. All right, bye.
girls, and then our game is over. First of all, I would like to thank to both of these incredible groups of players for for the passion, for all the fights, for all the games, and for making this show happen. Thank you, thank you, guys. And I should talk long and long and long because you deserve it, but I cannot be that long. So fourth place in the NBL 2023, Sprevel for Berlin. Bronze medalist. Lacrosse, Breslau. <laughs> 